Thanks, Christine. Uh, a few interesting tidbits to mm -hmm. be aware of and to be praying about, especially that, that pastor in Iran, to, mm -hmm. to, you know, for his, his safety. Mm -hmm. Well, she's an award-winning, best-selling author who has appeared on shows such as Oprah, Good Morning America, and Dr. Phil. Mary Hunt is the founder of Debt Proof Living and the author of this book, Seven Money Rules for Life, How to Take Control of Your Financial Future. And she joins us now. Mary, welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Thank you. Wonderful <laughs> to be back. You. you know, I loved how candid you were about your own story mm. in this book because so many times the experts on the financial, you know, ins and outs, they, they just, they are seen as these experts that have done no wrong. <laughs> but you start the book out by saying, actually, I've learned from my mistakes. And you were very candid about what you did wrong in the beginning. You know, it, I think it goes back to my childhood. And you know, a lot of the things that we deal with in our lives go back. And not that I tried to justify it in any way, but, but I grew up feeling really, really poor. And the way that I could make myself feel happy was to dream that I would be rich. And that's what I planned. When I grow up, leave home, I'm going to be rich. And then I'll be happy. And that was just in my mind. I don't know if I'm a goal setter or what, but I did go away from home. I, I did go to California to go to college. And it was like my life began then because I decided I'm rich. Well, you gotta have money to be rich and act like that, but, but for me, I was so driven and I found a little tool in a checking account, mm -hmm. not even a credit card. But the first time that I wrote a check that I didn't have enough money in the bank to cover it, but I was able to buy something, and then I got my campus paycheck to the, to the bank and to cover it, it was like something started to grow inside of me that said that's okay, if you can get away with it, mm -hmm. you can have stuff now and pay for it later. And honestly, Ronnie, and that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it was a, a lie, but I believed it and I lived it. And I never intended that it would go on forever. I figured I'd get married, I'd marry a rich person and then it would be fine. I'd have all the money <laughs> I needed, you know? And I did, I married a banker. You would think everything should have been fine. But still, that thing was still inside of me. And when I got a hold of a credit card, all of a sudden, my little secret game became socially acceptable because society tells us we're to have credit cards in case of emergencies and my life began to be filled up with emergencies you know uh, sales wanting to make a lovely home for our, for us and our family and our two boys and you have children and all of a sudden you know it starts to grow and it, it, it was just a horrible, horrible thing in my life. Now, you say in the book that even the credit card companies play into our need for significance or our oh, need yes. to be seen as important. And so they, they continually up our credit limit, right. which gives us this sense of, oh, well, I must be important That's if they're right. going to give me more well, credit. more than that, I must be able to afford it. I mean, yeah. would, they lend me, would they let me use all this money if I couldn't afford it? And every time I got a credit increase it was like a gold star on my on my character <laughs> you know and but but it, it gets out of hand and for me the 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 threshold was when we could no longer pay the entire bill in a single month mm. on all these credit cards and my husband was freaking out trust me but but going to the minimum payment i'm telling you that was that was a, a, a pivotal point mm -hmm. and I made the most horrible decision mm -hmm. of all to keep doing the minimum payments. Mm -hmm. And so you, you had multiple credit cards, all the department store ones oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. and then these sort of build up to the point as you said you just started doing the minimum payment and that's when all the interest charges really started getting You know it's like trying in. to stay ahead of an avalanche. You can do it for yeah. a while mm -hmm. uh, juggling and all of that but your house is going to fall. I mean a house of cards cannot stand anyone listening who thinks that they can continue this, you cannot, I promise you. And when it falls, it's gonna be disastrous and I don't want that to happen. Mm. So then what, what happened then yeah. at that point in your life where you realized, yeah. okay, this house of cards is just starting to tip over. Right, my husband was in banking. I convinced him to leave that he would never make enough money. We went into self-employment. I figured that was the way out, that finally I could be happy. Finally, we'd have enough money. And that business failed and there we were with nothing no savings, tons of debt. Some of it my husband didn't even know about. Mm. Uh, no unemployment checks because we had left our jobs voluntarily. It was, it was a hopeless, totally, completely hopeless situation. Mm. And it had to get that bad for me to be on my back before I was willing to look up and see, oh my goodness. And honestly, it was the first time ever I, I, I learned it wasn't my husband's rotten job or our rotten luck or I didn't have a rich family. It was me. 
There was something wrong with me. I, I was an overspender. I was never satisfied with anything. And it was at that point that I fell on my face before God. I had nowhere else to turn. I'm sorry that it had to get that far. So what did you do? What did you do? What was the first step? Oh my gosh, first, first of all, I had a meltdown. And then, <laughs> After the meltdown. Yeah. And, and, and then, and then I, 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 I begged God to forgive me. Mm. And I said, I will do anything. If you will ever trust me with another dollar, which I didn't think you really would, uh, I, I will do things your way. And I will change as you will change through me. So and it I starts with a lifestyle change. But well, what you're saying yeah. is it had to start with a heart change before Absolutely. the lifestyle change. It was an attitude. It was to realize, I don't deserve all this stuff. Those are lies I've been believing. You know, taking care of money, money mastery is not difficult. It's the lies we tell ourselves and the dumb mistakes we make mm. that make it so very, very difficult, but not impossible. Not impossible. So you, you started taking some steps, and in fact, you've... Um, put those steps yeah. in, into yeah. some very important rules in your book, Seven Money Rules for Life. And, and maybe uh, as we're going to have them come up on the mm -hmm. screen and, and, and we can kind of talk to them one at a time. Yeah. But uh, and it'll probably answer some of how your story unfolded, you know, right. as you're going through them as well, because you say number the number one rule is the most important. Oh, it is. Without number one, the, the other six rules cannot stand, and the, the rule is spend less than you earn. Mm, right. And I know people are going, oh yeah, right, like we don't know that. It's true, most people yeah. don't believe that. Mm -hmm. The truth is, what you earn and what you spend, there has to be a little gap there. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us are so tight and we're spending more than we earn. And trust me, the rule is not don't spend more than you earn. That's not the rule, because that would indicate it's okay to spend all you have. It's not. You have to get this little gap because it's in this gap that I teach you in this book how to build and increase that gap mm. is where all the other six rules can happen. Mm. That's where financial freedom can grow. That's where you'll get out of debt. That's where you'll stop, stop living beyond your means, learn to manage your money in the way that I believe God expects us to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the uh, old saying my, my dad used to use a lot was if your out goes more than your income, your upkeep will be your downfall. Oh, that's yeah. perfect. i got to remember yeah. that. Okay, i got to remember that. We'll write it down for you yes, later. Okay. But so that's rule number one. In our society, so many of us, I mean, we just, there's a dirty little word and it starts with a D and it's called deprive. I can't oh, deprive yes. myself of something. Oh, our children. Or my children. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah, you know, we'll have it now, we'll pay for it later. And our society condones that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything around us says that's okay. But we have to step up and say, no, yeah. I'm going to start taking care of, of myself. And you know, the seven rules are so simple. They build a strong foundation. And for many people, we don't have that foundation. Mm -hmm. You know what happens to a house? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you go in and the inspector goes, oh, guess what? No one built a foundation. It's going to fall over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let, I don't know if we're going to get through all seven or not, but, oh, but let, let, let's, keep, let's keep going. Two. Here we go. <laughs> Rule number two, save, save some future. for the future. Yeah. Always. Out of anything that comes into your life, you have to save some for the future. Now, some people might be saying, okay, but Mary, you don't know. I live paycheck to paycheck. Right. There is nothing to set aside. Well, we've got to, we've got to increase that gap. You can start with a dollar. You can start with half a dollar. You know, you have to start somewhere. Remember, it's that gap. It's so important. If there's one thing you learn, we've got to increase that gap. Mm -hmm. The way to do that is rule number two, which is save some for the future, blended with rule number three, which is give some away. Mm -hmm. Those two activities mm -hmm. will change your life. They're like a chemical explosion in your life because you start to be satisfied with what you have. You start to realize, I don't deserve everything now mm -hmm. when I can't pay for it. Mm -hmm. They will change your heart. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how these things together, I'm living proof of it. We saved and gave our way out of debt. We didn't get an inheritance. It took us 13 years to do it. Shouldn't have taken that long. If I would have known then what I know now, seven rules, um, mm -hmm. it would have been a lot easier. You saved and gave your way out That's of debt. Right. I like that. It changed that. my attitude. Yeah. It made yeah. me willing to be frugal. Yeah. Frugality, thrift are yeah. fabulous, <laughs> fabulous lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that was two and three, right. mm -hmm. save and gave. Mm -hmm. But then number, then number four. four, you have to learn to anticipate your irregular expenses. These are the things that get us in trouble. You might get your bills paid all month, but what are you going to do about that car repair that popped mm -hmm. up? Or some other thing. You have to start anticipating them. In rule number four, I teach you how to do that. A very, very simple lifestyle uh, life, uh, change, but we're going to do this a little bit at a time. Anyone can do this. And remember now, the gap is starting to build. You're getting joy like you never knew you could experience, which brings you to rule number five. 
Can we talk about it? Yes. Okay. You've got to tell your money where to go. <laughs> <laughs> All that is is pre-spending your paycheck. Some people oh. call it a budget. I like to call it a spending plan, mm -hmm. but it's that simple. You get your paycheck before you spend a dime. You have to plan. You have to tell every dollar what it's going to do. You're the boss. Mm -hmm. You're the money manager. You're the steward. God expects you to be responsible with this money. Mm -hmm. So you plan. And if your first plan falls flat on its face, you go, oh, it's not going to go far. You start again mm -hmm. and again until you get it. That's a tough one for a lot of people because yeah. it's, it's discipline. You it know, is. It's that, that I have a friend stuff. who calls it the black hole of checking. Yeah. She said, my money oh. goes into this black hole and I don't know what happens to it. Yeah. It just disappears. Oh, tell her about rule number five Yeah. And, and the chapter in the book. Very simple. That's not a thick book. You could read this in a weekend. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Should we go to rule number six? Yes, absolutely. We'll rule let you know how to get the book in a moment, but again, yeah. go ahead. Rule number six is you have to learn to manage your credit. We live in a world that we need to have good credit. That doesn't mean you have to have debt, okay? Mm -hmm. I want people to realize this. You need to have a good credit report. All these things are going to your, to your report, which turns out a credit score. I teach you all about that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's in Canada, it's in the States. All of this now is becoming a way of life. It doesn't mean you're spending more money than you have. You're getting a good record. Now you're going to get the best rates on your insurance, mm -hmm. the best rates when you have to get a mortgage for a home which is a good thing, mm -hmm. you know? So you're not telling people to, to get rid of all their credit cards, to cut them no, all up and get, no, get rid of them? No, can't do that anymore. Okay. And, but that doesn't mean that you carry debt on them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Credit card debt is, we're gonna lear learn in rule number seven, mm -hmm. we're there, mm -hmm. we're there. <laughs> borrow no more money than you can afford to repay. There are three kinds of debt. There's toxic debt, which is credit card debt. You cannot live with that. That's poison to your system. You have to get rid of that. I teach you a quick and wonderful way that you can get out of debt. It's how I got out of debt, how I've led thousands of people out of debt. But then we go on. There are other kinds of debt. There are student loans. There's a mortgage loan. There are sometimes automobile loans. What can you afford? I teach you that. And, and you know, I really truly trust God's word and never does it say that we should not have debt. But what it says, if you have debt, it should be as little as possible, paid back as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that we manage this. There they are, the seven rules. And that's what I appreciate about your book is it's so practical and easy for us, you know, who aren't that savvy in the financial world. It's easy for us to understand. It is. And, and you know, as I, as I went to write this book after helping people for over 20 years, I wanted to see if I could boil it down mm -hmm. to so simple I could write it on the back of a business card. I can. Yeah. <laughs> That's how simple these yeah. rules are. Mm. They're easy to remember. You keep them in your mind. You've got to focus on them day and night. And so that your mind is in a place where you're able to make good decisions mm. as you go through the day. Mm -hmm. Well, because of, of that and the importance of it, we thought uh, we need to make this available mm -hmm. through our, our Crossroads e-store. And that's online or, or you can call. In fact, uh, we'll have the information of where you can get this. Uh, if you go to crossroads.ca, you can just look for our, our e-store, click on that. You can you know, request it online. Or if you'd uh, prefer to call, you can purchase it at 1-800-265-265. 3100 so this is a, a, a purchase item you, you can call and you can go online and you can connect and mm -hmm. uh, just say yes give me please I want to buy a copy of seven money rules for life mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's something we we all need to Absolutely. to digest to yeah. to know and to not just read about but put into practice and even that's for our step. children Absolutely. and our grandchildren Absolutely. They need kids to can have learn these. this you know mm -hmm. kids can learn these rules yeah. the first one's so important spend less than you earn mm. yeah. and then everything else becomes possible yeah yeah great, great stuff thanks so thank much for coming you, our way thank mary you. thanks god, for god bless you yeah, sure. all right we'll stay with us more 100 huntley street to come including truth to go coming up in just a moment